Welcome today to Henrietta United Church of Christ, an open and affirming congregation where you are welcome, no matter who you are, no matter where you've been on life's journey, because Christ welcomes everyone. I greet you on this sixth Sunday of Easter. Did I get the number right? I did. Um, And on this Mother's Day Sunday, when we celebrate the mothers who bring us into the world, the mothers who raise us and show us the way through our lives and the the other other folks who mother us in various ways in our life um i one little announcement to begin with that the the rose on the altar is in honor of alexander van dyne who is the the child of katie sentif van dyne and jer van dyne uh, born a couple weeks ago and we celebrate this mother's day with Katie and with their whole family. Um, And now we begin our worship by sharing a sign of Christ's peace with the neighbors around us or the folks with us at home or through the chat. So I invite you to rise and share a sign of peace saying, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. There's a spirit of love in this place. There's a spirit of love in this place. You can't see it, but it's there, just as precious as the air. There's a spirit of love in this place. Oh, alleluia, sing alleluia. We bless your holy name. Oh, alleluia, sing alleluia. There's a spirit of love in this place. Now will you join with me in the responsive call to worship? Come and see what God has made. God transformed darkness into light and emptiness into life. Come and hear what God can do. God turns defeat into possibility, paving the way for peace. Come and feel God's gentle power. God hears our prayers and showers us with forgiveness. Come and shout the hope God gives. God's God's faithful faithful love love will will never never end. end. Let us rise in body or in spirit and sing together, Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Tell us 
And now let us open our hearts to God in prayer with the prayer of renewal. As God's beloved children, we are invited to come to our God with the fullness of our lives, to name our love and our hate, our faith and our fear. Trusting in God's mercy, let us seek God's guidance and renewal as we pause in a moment of silent prayer. And together. Holy, Holy One, One, help, help us, us to see you as our center and to cling to the good that you create in the world. Enable us to set aside the things that add to the world's hurt and dedicate ourselves to instead to sharing the hope you have given in Christ. Amen. Friends, the steadfast love of God never ceases. And God's mercies never end. They are new every morning, giving life and hope to all. Thanks be Made to God. God. Okay, I think we have at least one child with us today. So I invite her to come forward. And we'll grab the red wagon. And Grandma gets to come forward, too. Oh, and we have some young at heart people who are joining us, too. This is great. Thank you. That's perfect. There's the wagon. So uh, I am thinking today about the word hope. Hope. What is hope? Hmm. What is hope? Is that a word that you know, um, Olivia? If I asked you, what are you hoping for? Could you say something that maybe you're hoping for? Oh, Lydia, uh, River wants school to end. River is hoping for school to just end. <laughs> she is looking toward the end of the school year. That's a hope, okay? Yeah, so I was thinking about hope, and I think there are at least two different ways that we use that word hope. One way we use it is that you're hoping for something that you want to do or to get or to have or to be. So you're hoping that you will have something that satisfies you. That's, that's how we usually use the word hope. Oh, I hope I get um, a new teddy bear for my birthday or something like that. But the other way, and a second way, and maybe there are more ways that I haven't thought of, but a second way that we use the word hope is when we're thinking about um, keeping our spirits alive and, and hopeful even when we can't get what we want right now. And we have that hope not because of who we are, but because of who God is, and that we hope that somehow God will bring what is needed. And that's a different kind of hope. And it's a hope that's not just for us, but it's a hope that's for the whole world. So, um, yeah, I think, I think most of us have both of those kinds of hopes, right? The hopes that are for ourselves and the hopes that are for the whole world. So sometimes, though, if things aren't going right, 
and somebody's sick or somebody was mean to us or we don't have what we need, it's hard to feel hopeful. So what, how, do you, how can you be hopeful then? What gives you hope in your life? Is there anything that you can think of that gives you hope in your life, even in a time that doesn't seem very hopeful? What gives you hope? What makes you feel hopeful? Can you think of anything? We could open it up to the whole congregation. Oh, she has an idea. Your friends make you feel hopeful. Because if you have friends, then you're not alone. I love that. I'm going to start thinking about the friends in my life who make me feel hopeful. Yeah, people who love you help you feel hope. Anything else that gives you hope in your life? Yeah. Okay, seeing other people get through similar situations, okay? So if you're having trouble at school and you think, oh my gosh, I'm the only one who doesn't understand this, and then someone else says, I didn't understand it either, but I talked to my teacher and he showed me what it's about. That gives you hope. Or if you are having a struggle at work and things aren't going right, and maybe you even have to leave your job and look for another job. And someone says, oh, yeah, that happened to me. I'm praying for you. You can do it. That gives you hope. Yeah. So people, people really share hope with each other, don't we? And that's something that we can do every day for each other. Another thing that gives me hope is every day I open my eyes, and sometimes I don't even want to get out of bed. but I think, wow, this is a whole new day. And God gave this day, and here it is. Something good might happen today. You never know. So that gives me hope. So um, I just would like for you, all of you, and for me, to remember that hope is. And we can remember hope, and we can share hope with other people when we share our stories with them. So one way that we want to share hope is with our, our children's offering here, our Red Wagon offering. And we do different, different things with the Red Wagon offering at different times. This month and next month, the, the money that we're going to collect in our wagon is going to go to the Dunkirk Camp and Conference Center down on the shores of Lake Erie. There's a church camp down there where a lot of our um, kids and youth have gone in the summers. And it's a wonderful place because it's on the lake and it's a big, has big fields and it has woods and it's a place where you can be outdoors. And also because it's a place where children and youth can think about God in their life and can share their troubles and share their hope. So um, we're going to try to find out what specific needs they might have at Dunkirk. Like, do they need a new volleyball or do they need, I don't know, some seeds to plant? And then we will um, give this offering to help them so that some kids can have a great and spirit-filled time this summer. So that's one way we can share hope. Let's pray. God, thank you for hope. the kind that makes us think of good things and the kind that gets us through hard times. Help us to share our hope with others. Amen. And one way we receive hope here is from our choir. So come on down, choir. I know, it's hard to get up sometimes.
Sharing our scripture reading this morning is Kathleen Seriani. I'm going to try to hold my peace while I do this reading today because it is after my mom passed. <clears throat> First Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Please listen to me for the voice of our still speaking God. Who will harm you if you are eager to do it what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be intimidated, but in your hearts, keep Christ as Lord. Always be ready to explain. Every, anyone who's asked the reason for the hope that is in you. Do it with your goodness. Do this in your gentleness and respect. Remain good and conscious so that when you are accused, those who abuse you for the good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For this is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than they suffer for doing evil. Christ has also suffered because of other sins, the righteous, righteous, righteous and the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. Here ends the scripture lesson. Let us give thanks to the pray, praise to our still speaking God. Happy Mother's Day. This is Mom. <laughs> well, I don't often preach on the letter of First Peter. For one thing, there are some assumptions in the longer letter about slavery, and about gender that do not ring true to modern ears. For another thing, its teachings about suffering have too long been used to keep folks in abusive relationships, for example, or in situations of unjust oppression. And um, that's a practice that is clearly not in keeping with the teachings of Jesus, to use this letter that way. But I chose this text this morning from among the, the four choices of lectionary readings because of that one line about hope. Let me read it to you again. Always be ready to explain to any, anyone who asks the reason for the hope that is in you. Always be ready to explain to anyone who asks the reason for the hope that is in you. It got me thinking about hope and where it comes from and why it needs to be shared and how and when and where it might be shared. So let's back up a little bit and think about this letter in its context, in the context in which it was written. First of all, I want to note that scholars don't really know or agree about who the writer of the, of the letter is. It's written in the name of Peter, and tradition holds that this is St. Peter, the disciple of Jesus, the one who was with him every step of the way from the very beginning and through to the end, and who became the rock of the church and was a great church leader. But the language and the style and the content of the letter suggests that it was actually written much later in the name of Peter by one of Peter's followers, after his death, probably toward the end of the first, first century. It addresses a time when believers in Christ have been dispersed all across Asia Minor, which is what, what is modern-day Turkey. And by this time, at the end of the first century, Christians are considered by many as an unwelcome sect. And they are facing discrimination because of their faith. So the purpose of this letter is to offer encouragement instructions and instructions to those folks who are struggling and suffering and having a hard time. 
who find themselves in the difficult position of living in a society that does not understand their faith in Christ. The letter counsels those early Christians to be model citizens above reproach, doing everything right, not provoking the anger of others, not lashing out against those who mistreat them, but keeping their focus on Christ. In other words, 1 Peter's message is partly a stay out of trouble kind of message intended to protect the followers of Jesus from more persecution. But as we know, trying to stay out of trouble does not always protect us when we are members of an unwanted minority. If people want to do do someone harm for, say, the color of their skin or their ethnicity or their language background or they live in the wrong place or they worship God in a different way, harm can still be done, even if that person has done nothing wrong. And so there's another part of this letter that encourages Christians to actively do good things for other people, to interact with the culture around them, to set an example of holy living that is grounded in the love of Christ. Peter believes that if Christians do not give in to the temptation to respond angrily to those who mistreat them, but return unkindness with understanding and grace, it will eventually make an impression on those around them and may open doors toward a conversation about why they are the way they are. And then, when the time is right, others will ask them about their faith. And when that happens, Believers must be ready to explain why they are able to do good to others, even when others are not good to them. They must give an account of the hope that is in them. Where did it come from? What's it all about? In this way, the author of 1 Peter believes others may be brought to faith in God. They may be brought to God, as the letter says. Now, for the most part, those of us who live in Rochester in 2023 don't have quite the same struggles as the people in Asia Minor in the late first century. We have um, lots of conveniences that they did not have, and we have lots of troubles that they did not have, too. There are some parts of the world nowadays where Christians are still persecuted, like India, China, for example. But here in the U.S., for the most part, Freedom of religion is a given. We aren't breaking any laws by practicing our faith as we see fit. And we're not often criticized for our faith or asked to justify our religion to anyone if we're Christian. If anything, we struggle more with the knowledge that more and more folks are giving up to God altogether, regardless of their religious background partly because of the abuses that are often committed in the name of religion. Still, that sentence about giving an account for the hope that is within you strikes me as important even for us today. Because there is still plenty of abuse that takes place in our world and a need for folks who can set an example of healthy, life-giving relationships instead. And there is still plenty of injustice in our world and a need for folks to stand up and do the right thing in the face of that injustice. And there is still plenty of discouragement in our world, even now in 2023, and a need for hope, especially since hope is often absent in the public discourse. When you watch the news or read the paper, you see lots of stories about the world problems, but not so many about hope. When you sit around with friends, the conversation easily turns to complaints about all the things that are going wrong, all the dangers we face, all the disappointments, 
all the crime, all the injury, all the illness, all the climate change, it would be easy for us to just give up on hope and give in to discouragement and be distant and disappointed and cynical. Or, conversely, just to keep our heads down and just try to survive and not rock the boat. But first, Peter calls us to be ready to speak of hope and to point others to the God who inspires our hope. Jane Goodall, the, the world-renowned naturalist, who's the one who um, is, is famous for her study of chimpanzees, is no stranger to discouragement. She had to go through a lot to get to the place where she was known and, and respected as um, a, a studier of animals in the wild. She's watched the environment that she cares so deeply about degrade steadily over time because of human overconsumption and pollution. And yet, even as she nears the age of 90 years old, Jane has not lost hope. In fact, she still travels around the world uh, to speak about her reasons for hope and to share that hope with others and to teach, especially young people, um, about uh, environmental issues and to help them cultivate hope for the future. And she's written several books about it too, um, including one called The Book of Hope, which we read together, some of us, in our Lenten um, study group um, last month. So as I thought about how we might prepare ourselves to speak about our hope, I first thought about sharing with you some of the things that Jane says about why she still has hope after all these years. And these will uh, sound very familiar to the folks who read the book together. First of all, Jane says she has hope because of the amazing human brain that God has given us, which created modern technology um, and has built, benefited millions of people around the globe in so many ways. Although our use of technology has also caused many of the problems we are facing, new and innovative solutions like renewable energy and sustainable farming are being developed to correct those same problems. And so Jane has hope in the human intellect. Second, Jane points to the resiliency of nature. Maybe you've seen this even in your own garden. After a year of dryness, when the next spring rains come, once those seeds get a little help, they come back. Nature is able to repair itself if we just give it a chance. Jane points out that with more people becoming so passionate about protecting the environment, there's a greater possibility that, once again, nature can reclaim the damaged places and the environment can be restored. And so she has hope. Jane's third reason for hope lies in the tremendous energy and enthusiasm and commitment of young people around the world. And I've been feeling that myself this week as I see notices on Facebook of various kids who are graduating. As, as Jameson walked in this, this, uh, to church this morning after completing his first year of college at RIT, go Jay. Um, once young people come to understand the problems we are facing, they bring tremendous energy, commitment, hard work to the challenge of finding solutions. So, and Jane Goodall's youth program called Roots and Shoots is designed to inform and encourage youth to do what they can with their youthful energy and their brilliant minds to promote sustainable practices all around the world. And that program and meeting those young people gives her hope. Jane's fourth reason for hope lies in the irrepressible nature of the human spirit. Maybe you've seen that sometimes. People do get discouraged, and sometimes they give up hope. But overall, people have an amazing ability to get up and try again. Jane sees throughout all of history examples of people who tackle seemingly impossible tasks 
and just do not give up. She points to figures like Nelson Mandela, who grew up in apartheid South Africa, where he did not have protected rights, and who, because he spoke out against this, was imprisoned and had, for 21 years and had to do 17 years of hard physical labor in prison. And yet, who retained an amazing capacity to forgive those who had done him harm and eventually to lead his country out of apartheid without a single drop of bloodshed. Amazing, resilient, hopeful. More recently, um, and this goes beyond the book that we read, more recently Jane has identified a fifth reason for hope uh, as well. She talks about the power of social media. She offers the example of a re recent climate march in New York where um, the planners expected maybe 100,000 people. But because word of the event was spread on social media just by people who cared about it, more than 400 people showed up to this march, and one of those was Jane Goodall herself. And she says that with the ability to share information and hope around the world, the possibilities for human cooperation are truly endless. That gives her hope. We can work together if only we will. Now, Jane does not list in her official lists of her reasons for hope. She does not list faith as one of her four reasons for hope. But when her interviewer, Doug Abrams, um, asked her, how is it that you are able to maintain your hope even in the face of adversity? Jane spoke about her sense of the creative power in the world, that power that we call God or spirit, a power that is far greater than we are, a spirit that pervades all of nature. And she talked about how she saw that creative spirit in nature. And her sense of connection to God's spirit and through that spirit to all of nature is what has guided her life and helped her to feel connected with all of creation, fueling her hope and inspiring her work. Of course, you and I are not Jane Goodall. <laughs> I would not know what to do in Tanzania with chimpanzees. I wouldn't know where to start. We don't have the same interests or the same gifts that she brought to the world. And we have not experienced the same things that she has experienced. But still, I would venture to say that each one of us has a story to tell about hope and how it has cropped up in our lives. In fact, I would guess, I would say for sure, that each one of us in our own way is actually an expert at hope. And the reason I say this is because in spite of all we have endured, in spite of all we have yet to face, we are here. And we are still functioning. And we have come with open minds and hearts, asking God to speak to us and to lead us. That, to me, speaks of our hope. Like Jane, we are living in hope. We are still here. We are still taking time to gather in worship, and we are still getting up to face another day. When I read this um, morning's text from 1 Peter, I can imagine its author encouraging us to share something about our hope. Imagine with me if that writer, whoever it is who wrote 1 Peter, were to walk into the sanctuary today and ask you, to give an accounting for your hope? What would you tell him? What would you say? Would you talk about your faith in Jesus? 
Would you point to some event in your life that gave you hope? Or some person? Like Olivia mentioned, her friends give her hope. Would you talk about a time in your life when it seemed like there was no hope and then things turned around and your hope was restored? Would you admit that perhaps you are finding it really hard to keep hoping right now? That may be the case for some of us. You may think that your story isn't interesting enough or faithful enough or clear enough to really be told to anyone else. And you might not be exactly sure where your hope comes from. But I have a hunch that First Peter, whoever he was, was on to something here when he wrote about sharing the hope that lives within us. I have the feeling that if we start talking about the hope that keeps us going, God can do amazing things in us and through us for the world. So if you are willing, I want to try a little experiment. Could we take just two or three minutes to talk with the person sitting next to us? And if you're not sitting next to anybody, you could move if you feel brave and go sit with somebody. Um, and if you're not feeling brave, you could just do this in your own head too. That's, that's fair. Um, but, but I want to invite you to talk with the person next to you and say something about where you find hope. And if you're watching from home and there's somebody else in the room with you, you could do it right there. If there's no one in the room with you, you could type something in the chat or you could just reflect within yourself. So think for a minute about what you might want to share with someone else about your hope. And um, maybe you'll mention something about your faith or someone that you know or something that has happened in your life that keeps you filled with hope. So let's take a moment to share our hope. Well, thank you for your willingness to experiment with me. Maybe I should have planned things so that we would just go right to the coffee hour from here because we could just continue. But, but we will have a chance in the coffee hour. There's no, there's no, you don't need my prompting to share your hope with anyone at any time.
Um, and I hope that you'll continue to do that. And I think if we do it more frequently, we'll probably get better at it and it will be easier and feel more natural. And so I encourage you to continue practicing to say a word of hope to somebody now and then. And I would love to hear any of the stories that you sh shared too. So if you ever need a listening ear, I got two of them. <laughs> If we can hope in Christ, my friends, and lean on that hope, then as the end of 1 Peter's letter says, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. May it be so. Amen. Now let us sing our hope with the next hymn. Will you rise in body or in spirit and sing with me? I love to tell the story. of our hope by sharing some of the gifts that we have received with the world so that the story of Christ's hope may be shared with all those who need it most. Let us bring our offerings with joy.
trumpet sound and anthems ring. Let grateful folk their praises sing. Christ's gift of life is ours to share with all creation. Let us pray together. Generous, Generous and, and loving, loving God, God, we remember. We remember, we remember the others who have encouraged us. Many people have taught us. We have been forgiven. We have been loved. We admit that we haven't done it all ourselves. In a way, this offering is a response to all that has come before us. We pray that the money will be used to encourage, to teach, to forgive, and to love in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. So, a chance to share our prayers this morning. There's one that I missed that was in the basket last week, so I want to share it this week. It was from um, Karen Carpenter, who is a nurse, and she says, Nurses everywhere. It is National Nurses Week. It, it was last week. May we encourage the next generation of nurses to study hard and pass the state boards. We need more nurses, underlined, outlined, to continue the hard work of caring for all ages. Please give us prayers for strength. And so we do. And I happen to know that one of our own young people, Natalie Petrosky, has become a nurse this week and is now an RN. So we, yeah, we lift a prayer of thanksgiving and, and joy for Natalie and, and for nurses who care for us. Um, and along those lines, I have prayers for folks who have had surgeries. Um, Heather Wright had back surgery finally in, in March, actually, I think it took place. And she is healing well, still experiencing some pain, but it's much better than it was. And she actually made it to church last week. So let's keep Heather in our prayers that she continues to heal. Um, Mike Slauson, Linda's husband, had shoulder surgery. And while they were in there, as a bonus, they also fixed his rotator cuff. cuff. <laughs> so he's doing okay. He's still on the pain meds. And I, it makes me just want to exercise my shoulders when I think about him. And Bobby Moriarty, who is our faithful welcome table lady, um, is also facing shoulder surgery next week on the 18th. So, Bobby, we pray that all will go well and that you will um, heal in due time. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Nurses, Bobby, Heather, Mike. The other thing I wanted to pray about and crow about a little bit was the amazing neighbor to neighbor event that happened yesterday at the Henrietta Rec Center. We have such a diverse community in Russian Henrietta. Did you know? There are people from all over the world. There's something like 130 languages, that, native languages that are spoken in our school system in, in um, Russian Henrietta. And, uh, and um, about 1,000 people came out to this event, probably for the free food, but also, but also just to see and hear and know their neighbors. And many of them came in their ethnic garb, and it was beautiful. We had a couple different kinds of dance. Um, there was salsa dancing. There was Irish dancing. There was, I think, a group from Nepal who was dancing. And um, it was wonderful. And a special thank you to um, Terry. Terry Van Ostrand and Linda Trainer, who were there to help staff not only the HUCC, information table, but also the fish raft information table. Oh, and Lynn Stewart, and there she is. She, yeah, it was amazing. Lynn is on the committee with me that planned this. And here's an example of how the faith community can gather others together because our Interfaith League invited the participation of the town and of the school district to do something that we couldn't do on our own. What a blessing. It, it gives me hope. And so I, I lift a prayer of thanks for our faith community and for our town and our schools. Yes. Yes. 
funded by the school district and the town, and HUCC made a donation, and, and we'll see when, when the bills come in if we need a little more. We'll ask God for, to provide. Um, though that's all that I have on my radar. Are there other prayers to share? Yes. Amen. Yes. So we lift a prayer with Joel, thanking God for his mother and all she taught him, and how she said that when something ends, there's always a new beginning, and that gives him hope even to today. So thank you, God. Yep. Oh my goodness. Oh. So we join Sammy in praying for Haley, who is the cousin of Jocelyn Evan, Ev, uh, Evan and Bella Wilt, whom you remember from the time when they were attending church here. And, um, their cousin Haley was hit by a car. And oh, we ask God to pour out the healing on this young girl, 14 years old, that she may heal, that she may know herself to be loved, that she may be restored to a sense of peace and wellness, and that hope may spring up again within her. Anyone else? Then let us pray. Great and gracious God, we thank you for this time to pause, to breathe, and to focus on your presence in our lives. You have heard all the prayers we've offered this morning, prayers for healing, prayers for guidance, prayers for strength, prayers of joy and celebration. We thank you for the life you have given us, for the healing power that flows through us, and for the love that sustains us every day of our lives. On this Mother's Day, we offer a special prayer for the mothers who have brought us into the world, for the mothers who have raised us, and for all those who have mothered us throughout our lives. Some of us have been blessed with warm relationships with our mothers or with others who have showered us with love and attention. Some of us have had strained relationship with our mothers or our caregivers and have struggled to feel close. Some of us have been abused by the very hands that were meant to care for us. Some of us have never known the love of a mother at all and have wondered what it might have been like. Some of us have lost our mothers and have grieved that loss deeply. Some of us have wished to become mothers, but found that it was not to be. Some of us are mothers now, struggling to keep up with everything, trying to keep our heads above water, and sometimes feeling lost and alone. Help us to remember that like a loving mother, you remain with us always, filling each one of us with the ability to love and be loved. God, we remember that Mother's Day began as a time when mothers would pray for peace in the world. And we acknowledge with sadness that war continues to plague our world today. And so we ask again, teach us the ways of peace. Help us to pave the way for the day when no mother will have to send a child or a spouse or a sibling to war. Help us to practice forgiveness, reconciliation, justice, kindness, and humility, and teach us to pray not only for our own loved ones,
but even for our enemies, reaching out across the boundaries that divide us so that your hope may abound. All these prayers we lift to you, trusting in your power to create and renew us, to forgive and reconcile us, to lead us in truth and grace. And we join with Jesus as we say his prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now some announcements from Eric. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship, as always, here at Henrietta United Church of Christ. Whether you're with us here in the sanctuary or at home, comfy in your backyard or sofa, we welcome you and we invite you to sign the Welcome to Worship pads, which are found on the center aisle, and pass them along. Get to meet the people you're sitting next to, as well as join us for fellowship time down in the uh, fellowship hall and talk about hope, Martha. This morning I came in, there was no fellowship hour set up. I go, ooh, we're in trouble. And lo and behold, Lynn and uh, Cindy Francis stepped up and we have a wonderful coffee hour for everyone. So thanks for them for filling in today. And you have an opportunity also to fill in those times ahead as we have a schedule down there if you can do a treat for a Sunday, sign up. We'd love to have you be a host or hostess. So there's a reminder also to parents and mentors of the confirmation class. We will, they will be attending worship this coming Friday at Congregation at Chaim at Mountain Rise, that is. And uh, they'll be doing their final retreat on Saturday at Mountain Rise UCC. So if you have any questions, see Pastor Martha and uh, that will be an uh, important event in their study of their faith. Uh, Pastor Martha will, Martha will be attending a meeting at the national offices of our United Church of Christ in Cleveland on Monday and Tuesday. So if you have an emergency or a need, please call Reverend Greg Osterberg, and his number is in the office or through the office. You can get that. Also, um, we want you to make sure to join us for fellowship time, but I believe we have a video uh, from our uh, church clerk, Debbie Fiesel, on a congregational meeting that is coming up. So if Scott would run that. Good morning. At our annual meeting in January, we voted to sell our parsonage. The Board of Trustees has worked diligently these past several months, and the time has come for the next step of this process. As your clerk, I am announcing a congregational meeting to be held on May 21st, immediately following worship. This meeting has been requested by the trustees to present their findings and answer any questions. We will then vote on two matters related to this sale. First, approval of the recommended sale, and secondly, the distribution of the proceeds from this sale. Please be aware that our bylaws require that all votes be cast in person at the meeting. There is no provision for proxy or absentee votes. The live stream will end when worship concludes that day and the meeting will not be broadcast. Any members who wish to vote should plan to attend in person that day. Prospective members and friends are always welcome but are not eligible to vote. Please plan to attend so that all are represented and we can meet our quorum. See you next week. Thank you, Debbie, and we'll look forward to seeing all of you next Sunday. Very important meeting. Our trustees and, and the all have been working hard on this, so that will be a very good uh, event. Uh, Joan, did you have an announcement? I see you're coming forward, so I assume you weren't rushing the stage. <laughs> for... <laughs> I 
I just wanted to share with you the final numbers from um, the drive through dinner um, at the end of April. We had a total sales of 1,500, well, 1,582 plus 140 post sales, a $20 donation for a total of $1,742. Less expenses is $1,411.84, which is considerably more than we had before. Yeah. So thanks to all who made it possible. And thank you. Thank, thank you for you. all, thanks to all who worked so hard on that project. And it was a huge success. So thank you. Our, uh, Pastor Martha will close us with our worship. Let us rise again in body or in spirit and sing together, Rejoice, you pure in heart. <laughs> Rejoice, you pure in heart, lift praises to the sky. Your festal banner wave with joy, the cross of Christ rise high. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Bright youth and season age, strongholds and spirits meek. Rise high your free exalting song, God's wondrous praises speak. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. With voice as full and strong as ocean surging praise, send forth the hymns the saints have loved, the songs of ancient days. <coughs> rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. <coughs> With us through life, oh, there's another one. Path, still changing as you go from youth to age by night and day in gladness and in woe. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Now let us go forth into the world, bringing peace along with us, with Christ as our guide, with the Holy Spirit in our hearts, ready to share our hope with anyone who asks. And as we go, may God guide our path. Amen. Amen. Amen.